Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here. And guys, I am very excited for today's interview as we have Dr. Michael Biamonte with us today. And he's the founder of Biamonte Center for Clinical Nutrition. And he's also the co-creator of BioCybernetics, which is an unprecedented computer software program that's able to study blood work, mineral tests, and many other lab tests to determine exactly what your body needs. I'm really excited to dive into this interview today. So thank you for uh, hanging out with me today, Dr. Biamonte. Oh, you're more than welcome. So, so I want to find out first and foremost is you're in a very unique area of nutrition and how you're helping people with it. So, so how did you kind of, you know, get into this world and, and, and find your interest here? I went to naturopathic school back in 1981, and I was very interested in the interpretation of lab tests, particularly some, you could say somewhat avant-garde interpretation by some of the barnstorming chiropractors that were around in those days. They were able to look at blood work and they were able to see far more than the average medical doctor could because probably they were applying more physiology and biochemistry. They weren't just looking for disease parameters. They would look at the blood work and the same blood work a doctor would look at and he would tell you at your physical that you're fine. They could find nutritional deficiencies and imbalances in there. Mm. So this fascinated me and that's sort of what I majored in when I was in school. And when I got out of school, I then decided this because computers were becoming popular just around then, PCs were just coming out. I decided, wouldn't it be great rather than having to sit down and manually go over each test on a patient, if I could um, data entry this into a computer and then have the computer run through a program and tell me everything that I would normally take hours to find out, maybe in 10 minutes or something like that. Mm. So I was going around to health food stores at that time because I had just um, graduated from school and I was handing out my business card and I was telling people what I was doing. I went into this one health food store and she said, well, you have to talk to Dr. Santoro at at Grumman Aerospace because he's doing this. Mm. He has a computer he's already using and his, um, his son is a PhD candidate in computers and he's got a whole group of people there. So I contacted this doctor and I was very, very pleased to meet him and his associates. He had a, a, a team of people that he had put together who were working at that time for Grumman, but they were kind of on, oh, they were kind of like on, a, um, how would I put it? They were being borrowed by, by NASA. So they were kind of like on loan to NASA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on loan. And what they're, now Dr. Santoro had originally developed the life support systems on the lunar module. That was the, the bug looking spaceship that landed on the moon. And they now had him in charge of putting together some kind of program that would help them discern what exact nutrients the astronauts would need when they were in the space station for a long period of time. So I met him, we talked and whatnot, and he brought me on board to, to the team. And they were building literally a computer model of the human body that wow. would be able to look at data that you would give it. And the first, the first set of data they would normally give it is a complete blood test, like typically what your doctor does when you go for a, um, a physical. But they were also putting in other parameters. Um, it got so advanced that the computer could literally look at your blood work. It could look at um, a report from your acupuncturist or your chiropractor as far as what he was adjusting or the acupuncturist and what, where he was putting the needles, what systems he was he was trying to handle it could and then it, they expanded out to look at hair mineral testing which shows you the minerals in your body and the toxic elements and they just kept rolling with this and they were including more and more tests and it got to the point where they actually had a working model of the body where they could give this computer data on you and the computer would run a simulation of your body and tell uh tell us what's imbalanced if you're toxic with something what nutrients you needed how much you need it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so this was qu- quite interesting, but unfortunately what happened is we kind of ran over budget mm. because we were flying other doctors in from all over the world to contribute to this. And it was apparently getting very expensive. So they, they cut us. So we were a little surprised, but we said, well, what are we going to do with this now? We've got all this data that we've amassed for all these years. You know, you know, just to, I guess to, just as a thought here, it's kind of interesting that they, they would cut you guys there when you have all this ability to handle all these things um, and you're handling causes rather than like treating causes. Right. Like, you know, how like the medical field typically does. So you also got to wonder at times is uh, 
if it wasn't just a budgetary issue, if they also, you know, these guys are getting too close to solving something that makes a lot of money. <laughs> well, on the big on the big picture with big pharma, that would definitely be true. I don't know yeah. if that was true at NASA particularly. And anyway, um, I don't want to take you too off uh, too off of uh, no, but that's where valid, we're going that's here. Very, but that's where my brain goes. <laughs> and you're you're correct. That's a, that's a correct way of looking at it and pulling the string on things. But anyway, they said, well, you guys can just keep it, do whatever you want. So we said, okay. So we we left with all the data and we started a, a private company at that point called BioCybernetics, which owned the computer model. And we started marketing the service to other doctors. So we sort of, we had other doctors then sending in their patients reports. We would run the data and then send them a report from the, from the um, computer. We also were using it in our own private practices. And after about a year or two, we, we were getting extremely good results with all types of problems, diabetes, osteoporosis, whatever the ailment was, because the computer would target exactly what nutrients this person needed. And mm -hmm. it wouldn't give them the wrong ones, which is important because most people, when they get into supplements, they go based on what they hear on TV or at advertisement. They don't really know if that's correct for them. And taking something that's incorrect for you can throw you out of balance. Mm. Um, we had about 30% of the people who were using the, the system that were getting strange reactions. We had some people, you know, 70% getting great reactions, another 30% odd reactions. They would take the vitamins and get worse or not be able to tolerate them or have crazy things happen. So I volunteered to figure out what was up with this particular group of people. And what I eventually discovered was they had some kind of intestinal imbalance and I was later, later able to trace it down to um, yeast overgrowth in their intestines. And yeast interacts with vitamins. So if, if someone has a yeast overgrowth and they take a B complex, for instance, the B complex could make it worse. All the vitamins that, that support yeast's own metabolism um, and, new, and new minerals for that matter, when you take them orally can make your yeast condition worse. So if you're a woman, as an example, probably the best, easiest example, a woman with chronic vaginal yeast infections if you were to take certain nutrients like vitamin D, copper, coenzyme Q10, B complex, it could make her vaginal yeast infections worse because those vitamins actually feed the yeast to make it grow. So when I came to this epiphany that this was the problem, these people had candida, I didn't really know anything about it particularly. So I told them, well, you got to go to your doctor and tell him you have this overgrowth of candida, let him treat you and then come back and we'll put you back on the program. I, I was stepping into an area I was not prepared for. Sure. These people came back and said, the doctor said there's no such thing as candida or everybody's got it. It doesn't make a difference. All of these things. So I said, no, no, this is not correct. Because if you look in the Merck Manual, which is a book every doctor has in his office that goes through all the, the basic diseases, it very clearly says in, said in there that candida comes about due to indiscriminate use of broad spectrum antibiotics and it listed all the symptoms of candida so i knew these guys didn't know what they were doing so is that because a lot of uh antibiotics are like you know based off of that type of bacteria right because isn't that how isn't that how antibiotics work it's like similar to like molds and things like that is that is that correct uh yeah, that's that's correct but not the reason the reason why okay. is because antibiotics kill the friendly bacteria which lives in your intestine mm. which we now see on tv all the time all the probiotics those probiotics protect you from the yeast overgrowing and antibiotics kill them and Got then it. that allows the yeast that's there then to go into overgrowth. So Got these it. guys didn't even know that much. So I told them, well, what you have to do is find then a more sophisticated doctor. And it was usually the alternative doctors and uh, that would know about this. And at that time, I was friendly with people like Dr. Ronald Hoffman and uh, the late Bob Atkins, mm -hmm. a lot of the more prominent functional medical doctors in Manhattan, because that's, that's where my um, practice was. So I said, well, go see Dr. Atkins. He knows about this. He even writes about it in his book. See him get cured and come back. So they did this. They came back a couple of months later. They said, yes, I went to see the doctor. He was um, really good because he understood everything about this. And he treated me and I got better for a while, but then I just relapsed. And I kept mm. hearing this from everybody. I got better for a while and then it all came back. And I said, Jake, what am I going to do? So I said, well, I better figure this out. Otherwise, I'm not, nothing's going to happen with these people. So that was in 1988, and I've been studying and specializing in um, yeast conditions ever since then, which has um, it, been a quite a fascinating trip because yeast is something that's normal to be in your intestinal tract. It's supposed to be there, but only in small amounts. And when it overgrows, it can produce over well over 150 different symptoms, 
and affect many, many systems in your body that you would never even consider. People who typically have chronic yeast problems begin with having fatigue, unexplained fatigue. It sometimes worsens depend, depending on the weather because the weather can influence the yeast activity in your body and also your, your diet because different foods feed the yeast in your system and other foods can starve it. So we can go up and down depending on your diet and the person may not be even aware of what they're doing. The person so, so then from the fatigue can graduate to having brain fog, which is a very one of the biggest symptoms of candida is they start forgetting names, they start forgetting this, they forget that, they feel like they're in a fog. They then can start developing rashes, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, and then eventually they can become what we used to call a universal reactor, which is somebody who from the, the yeast condition develops damage in their intestinal tract, small micro tears that the yeast makes, because the yeast is literally like a vegetable. It's like having a plant growing in your intestines and it grows roots. And those roots cause, cause micro tears in your intestines that allow things that normally would be barred to, from entering your blood just to float right in. And your body views that as an attack, foreign invader, it's an allergy. It goes through that whole pathway. This is a, a condition we call leaky gut syndrome. It's mm -hmm. also known as intestinal permeability. And one of the main causes of this is candida. So now the person starts to react to everything. They, they're having food allergies. They try to go out to a, like an affair of some kind, a wedding, something like that. The smoke in the, in the room starts to drive them crazy. They start just reacting and being chemically intolerant of anything in their environment. That's probably one of the highest, most advanced stages of candida is when you have candida with this leaky gut and now you're afraid to leave your house because you can't walk down the aisle in the supermarket where the cleaning solutions are. Mm. Well, Those Dr. Biamonte, this, yes. this brings up two thoughts for me because I'm, I'm I, that I guess going back to something you said earlier first is you mentioned that they would get better and then they would relapse. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm curious, like what was happening in that situation? Because as you said, it was caused by a lot of excess antibiotics. And I'm curious if there's like environmental causes too. So I guess like looking at those things, like it was solved and then it relapsed. Like why would a relapse occur? That leads us kind of into the treatment that I discovered, which is covered in my book, The Candida okay. Chronicles, which you can get on Amazon. One of the things that I discovered is there are certain axioms and datums that doctors typically violate um, that I learned the hard way by just listening to patients and hearing what went wrong. And then I hit the textbooks to figure out what the technical aspect of that was. But why the people were relapsing is because yeast is, is known to be very mutative. Candida mutates and genetically switches mm -hmm. when it's being exposed to the same medication to kill it. So after about 21 days on the same treatment, whether it's a drug or an herb or whatever, the candida genetically switches and mutates to avoid that medicine affecting them. So therefore, the longer you're on a treatment, the, the higher the percentage is gonna be that the treatment then becomes ineffective because the, the candida has genetically switched and turned more into a, a, a super strain. And now it comes back and all your symptoms come back with it. Wow. This is where I discovered that you had to rotate uh, the antifungals that you used. So on my program, the main uh, part of the, of the yeast elimination, which typically gets rid of 70% of the overgrowth. We rotate every four days, a different medicine. Typically we give them four different herbal medicines that kill yeast and we have them switch them every four days. And that eliminates the fact that uh, the candida has a chance then to mutate, genetically switch, become a more superior strain and then just come right back and run rampant. But it's, it sounds very sim similar to what you hear in like virology about like diseases that, you know, from different treatments, they get stronger, they learn how to like, and they become like a super bug. It sounds very similar. It is. Like, I, I guess like going to, as you mentioned, um, some of the, some of the symptoms that start to happen and you mentioned, you know, the leaky gut syndrome, like things that eventually leads to, I'm curious um, if you have seen, cause I'm sure you see a lot of people that have been to other doctors, the situation hasn't solved. They, they come to you to look at it. Have you seen people diagnosed with a lot of the, the wrong things that were actually candida? Like, oh, this person has chronic fatigue syndrome or this person has, um, you know, like some sort of intestinal issue or whatever. So have you seen other things diagnosed as that? And, and if so, what, what things have you most commonly seen them diagnosed with? Well, the year is 2022. I've been mm -hmm. at this since 1988. It still surprises me at what, what occurs. Candida can be at the bottom of, of almost any illness. 
because it causes inflammation. Similar to you hear about COVID with the cytokine storm, yes. candida causes its own cytokine storm. It causes inflammation. And because it causes inflammation, you can get, end up with almost any problem the longer you have it. The obvious thing with candida is bloating, gas, and all kinds of digestive problems. But the more it gets into your system, it can start causing rheumatoid arthritis. It can cause multiple sclerosis. It can cause anything, literally anything, depending on your genes. Mm -hmm. The longer you have candida and the worse it gets, it starts to cause all the SNPs in your body, the gene SNPs, that it would eventually perhaps key in and cause an illness to actually do that earlier because it's putting strain on that genetic formation that's there. Wow. So now I have to ask this because you mentioned the, the cytokine storm and a lot of the research I've done on that, it, 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 and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, that it tends to be stronger in people with a higher body fat composition because that can actually feed that inflammatory issue. I'm curious if people with different body compositions and things like that react to candida differently. Blood types are the most interesting when you're looking mm. at candida. Um, type O's can get candida, but they're, they tend to be more resistive to it. They usually recover faster than type A's. Type A's can be more at prey and be more symptomatic of it. But yes, also be, what you're saying is correct. The, the body fat is an issue, especially if the person tends to eat non-organic and GMO foods. That's the other thing, the booby trap about this, which is fascinating, is that people are more prone to candida when they eat a high diet of non-organic and GMO foods. Mm. Which, which could be said of anything, any illness or any, anything that would bother the person would be aggravated by eating GMO foods and non-organic foods. Let's, we see a lot of the hormonal issues and things like that, you know, that we're seeing going around now from all these modified foods and meats and everything else. And it, it's kind of wild when you introduce that into the body. It is. And there are other environmental Ill, uh, aspects, which are interesting. Toxic metals play a very strong effect with candida. Mercury, copper, or arsenic in particular, um, aluminum, all of these metals, even iron. In fact, there is one conventional um, anti-candida medicine that's been used for probably over 50 years. And its main mode of action is to block the candida's ability to absorb iron. So that's got to tell you that iron therefore is good for candida. So if someone had candida taking iron would be bad in their case. And these metals are very common. We could do an, enti we could do an entire week's podcast just on the effects of toxic metals that most doctors and patients are unaware of. Well, it's uh, the aluminums and everything else we're taking in in the environment and what we eat and what gets injected, all these different things. Like we're taking in so much more metal now. And it's, it's kind of interesting because we look at it in a lot of ways and we're saying, oh, we're safer because our food quality and things like that are better. And in a lot of ways, it's not. No, not at all. And what's very interesting is I, my office at one point happened to be three blocks away from ground zero. Oh, wow. So I, so I was getting... I had a lot of, a lot of um, rescue workers and a lot of the firemen that were there doing the work in Ground Zero come to me as patients because they were started to get sick. And uh, which, which I think most people are aware that that happened to many of the, the uh, Ground Zero workers. And when we tested them, we found there was what was really bothering most of them were, were the, the, the toxic metals they were picking up from that environment. Because of course, you have buildings like that that collapse and things burn and all this stuff gets into the air. Of course, they're going to be inhaling and getting the metal dust laying on their skin, which eventually will absorb into their body. And well, and you um, also that's, look that's at the changes. You look at the changes in building materials and things like that too. Of when the when when those towers were built, a lot of the things used to build that build that like they aren't legal now as well. So like we're exactly. taking in a lot of different chemicals. That's a stellar point. It's, it's like the asbestos and all these different things that that are out there. It's not a metal, but it's it's still like something that's just not great for your body. Yeah, no, that's a, a very, very true. So because of these influences, diet influences, influences by hormones, like as, as an example, estrogen stimulates the growth of candida and candida itself is a very estrogenic organism. It mm. makes the estrogen receptors in a person's body more keen. So even though a person's total estrogen may not go up, just by having an overgrowth of candida, those receptors become more, more active. So it gives you that same phenomena as though you had too much estrogen. Wow. You know what? It's really interesting. Not long ago, I had talked to um, Dr. Patrick Vickers and we were talking about uh, the changes in the cancer world. And he was saying one of the biggest things that, that he's seeing is a lot of the plastics and stuff like that are actually stimulating more estrogen and things like that in the body. Mm -hmm. So I'm sh based on what you're saying, I'm sure 
like those things like BPAs and stuff like that would be a problem with candida as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. In fact, Dr. Vickers and I many years ago had a long discussion about that. Ah. Coincidentally, um, um, I'm quite a big fan of his and a lot of his products. I found that a lot of his things really work very well. Uh, but this is true. Um, candida is affected by metals. It's affected by diet, by hormones, by changes in your hormones. And it can also, to some degree, be vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so interesting because mo it's not the thing most doctors look at. Most doctors are really trained, and it's unfortunately by it, they're trained by the drug companies to mo mostly think antibiotics. Yeah. And unfortunately, antibiotics are one of the major causes of candida. As a matter of fact, you could you could say that some of the major causes of candida happen to be uh, drugs and and treatments by doctors, which is crazy. But that's um, unfortunately the truth. Well, it's, you know, I, I look at somebody, um, you know, my, my dad's in, in his, his late sixties and I look at, you know, he's on this drug, but then this drug to treat what that drug caused and things mm -hmm. like that. And it's, it's, it's a lot of what's done rather than, than handling root causes. And, and I think at, at that point in time, like, you know, we're not making people better. Like you're talking about, that's a real problem. Most drugs. And as a matter of fact, how they actually work is by creating a biochemical change. And you could reinterpret the biochemical change as a nutritional change. And then you could reinterpret that as some kind of nutritional deficiency. Because the body runs on nutrients, it doesn't run on drugs. There's no such thing as an aspirin deficiency. There's no such thing as a Tylenol deficiency or any yeah. other drug. But yes, you can have B vitamin deficiencies. You can have deficiencies of vitamin C. And there's basically three, three levels that you're dealing with. When you're looking at nutrients, you're looking at a, um, a physiological level, which is where the nutrient is in the right amount for everything in the body to work correctly. Then you go below that and you have a deficiency where the deficiency doesn't allow things to work correctly. And then below that, you have a clinical deficiency where the person has obvious symptoms and signs of that, like someone with scurvy with vitamin C deficiency. Mm -hmm. But you could also go up to a toxicological effect on a vitamin. You could take so much of a vitamin that you create an imbalance in your body and now it's become toxic. So you have all those levels to look through in terms of balancing somebody. And that's our, that's the goal that we seek. Once we've cleared the person of the candida, the first thing we immediately do is test them to see if there's any inherent toxicity in their body or any toxicity they're being exposed to that would predispose them to getting the candida. Mm. Um, then once we've detoxified them of the toxicity, we then balance all their nutrients. We have testing that literally will tell us about every nutrient that's supposed to be in your body and it will tell us the level if it's too high or too low. And then we just seek to balance the person. And that's where some, that's where the biocybernetic system now comes in. We use it as a way of, to clean up and rebalance the candida patient. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Cause it seems like, like that's where you started, right? Like, oh, we're going to handle all these nutritional things and people, but you're like, oh gosh, there's this huge thing in the way of us even getting to that. And that, and, and that becomes what you end up specializing in. <laughs> it's, it's the under, it's the undercut in a sense, in a way. But yes, it's true. What you're saying is true. And it's, um, in a way, it's, it's, a, it's a sad thing that you just can't take people and just run them right through. But the person's, if the person's not going to get the correct results, then you have to have them set up. So uh, eliminating candida in many senses is a setup of the person. We're setting them up to then being able to totally balance them. We're, we're removing something which shouldn't be there in the first place. Very cool. Well, I, I've really enjoyed this interview, Dr. Biamonte. For people listening, if they want to connect with you, if they want to learn more, hack's gonna be the just give me one second. I'm sorry. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy's on a phone call. Oh, thank you so much. But Daddy's on a phone call. I am so sorry. My my it's wife is not home today. <laughs> All right. So Joseph will we'll cut this part out. The Joseph, the editor. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed this and I, I I didn't really know a lot about Candida before, and it's it's very intriguing seeing this and a lot of your experience in this. So I know you actually have a book out now called the Candida Chronicles, but for people listening, if they want to grab the book or if they want to connect with you and, and learn more about how you can help them, how's it going to be the best way for our listeners to do that? Okay. The book is available on Amazon, like everything else in the world is. Um, the Candida Chronicles written by Michael Biamonte, and they can go to our websites. We have several websites. The first, the main website is health-truth.com. And there's also the New York City Candida Doctor. Very and cool. Go to either website. Well, Dr. Michael Biamonte, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. My pleasure.